In this video, we're going to hook up our activities to our service layer using those events that we put together in the last couple of videos. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I want to go, I want to start off with hooking up our nav drawer. So if you recall, we have our nav drawer that, that sits on the side of the application for some of our navigation, and it displays our username and our avatar. Well, let's say first, uh, let's imagine for a moment that we're in our profile activity and we update our display name. And then we swipe to the right to bring out the nav drawer, and we'd want that display name to be in the nav drawer to be uh, to reflect the thing that we just changed it to. So what I want to do is I want to handle the event for when our display name changes, when our user details have been updated, and update our display name. Now we won't be updating our avatar just yet because we're going to be using a third-party library that I'll talk about later to handle downloading the the avatar images. So for now, let's go ahead and jump into our views namespace and open up our main nav drawer. Now in here we have this to do. And for now, uh, we're going to keep that there because we're going to be loading in avatars in a different way. What I want to do is I want to have this main nav drawer registered so that uh, for the, uh, on the bus so that I can handle events right on this class, right on this object. And it, because I think that's the most logical place to put the code that'll automatically update the display name text and the avatar image. Now, of course, there's a slight issue with that, and that is uh, how does the main nav drawer get unregistered? So at this point, we don't have any code that tells the main nav drawer that the parent activity, the activity that kind of owns it, has been destroyed. So we do need to introduce a new method for. Uh, for telling the nav drawer that it needs to be destroyed so that it can unregister itself from the bus. And fortunately, that's pretty easy to do because we already have in our activities, in our base activity, we already have this method uh, right down, where are you? Or I think I put it in the base authenticated activity. I put it somewhere. There we go, set nav drawer. I was staring at it the entire time. All right, so we do have this one method that says this dot nav drawer equals drawer when we instantiate the main nav drawer. So what I can do here is we have our create method being invoked, but I also wanna have the destroy method being invoked on on destroy. So I'm gonna scroll all the way up on base activity. And in addition to saying super on destroy and bus on register, I wanna say nav drawer dot destroy. Now, the destroy method doesn't exist yet, and that's fine. We'll go ahead and create it. So let's go ahead and jump into our views nav drawer class and come here, I guess right underneath the constructor is just fine. We will create a public void destroy. So now we have two options as far as how we want to handle registering the bus. Do we want to handle that at the base nav drawer class, or do we want to handle that within main nav drawer? Well, because it's such a useful thing, I think, to hook into the the event bus in this particular application, I'm going to do that at the base nav drawer level so that any nav drawer that you might want to create with the application would be registered with the bus. So let's go ahead down here in the bottom of the constructor in nav drawer and perform the actual registration. We can do that by doing activity dot get application or get your application because that returns the application class that we created for this application that has the bus per, uh, or bus property on it. So we'll say get your application dot get bus dot register and pass in this as the thing we're registering. And we're also going to need to, in order to unregister ourselves, we're going to need to keep a reference to our activity. Well, specifically, well, we, we, we need a reference to either our activity, our application, or our bus. But it's, I think it's more general to keep a reference for, of our activity around as a protected field. So I'm going to come up here, and we already have it as a protected field. What am I saying? So let's go down to destroy and say activity dot get your application dot get bus dot unregister. So our destroy method will simply invoke get bus dot unregister, passing in this as the object to unregister. So that way, anything that inherits from nav drawer will be registered with the bus. So now that we've done that, we can jump into our main nav drawer and handle the event that uh, gets uh, that happens every time our uh, our, our, our profile is updated. Let me go ahead and show you exactly what's wrong with the code right now, just so you guys can see visually the process that I'm thinking in my, my head as far as what, what what's problem I'm solving with this code. So I'll go ahead and hit play there and give Gradle a couple seconds to do its thing. 
Might have to pause the video, which I think I will, because Gradle seems to be taking a little bit longer than you. Oh, of course, it comes right up right when I say I'm going to pause the video. All right, so we have our application, and of course it crashed. Why did it crash? Let's look at Logcat. Now, that's always a fun thing with Logcat, is it sometimes just decides to not show you any of the logs. So, uh, yeah. Let's try, um... Let's try that again. And hopefully... I'm trying to think of what would make that crash. Probably a null reference exception, I'm thinking. Oh, there we go. We got we got an error. Uh, attempt to invoke virtual method destroy on a null reference. Oh, because I'm stupid. I'm going to leave this in the video just because it shows how incredibly dumb I am. Because on the on destroy method, we invoke navdrawer.destroy, but not all of our activities have a navdrawer. So this might be a null reference, and that's why we're getting that error. So we simply have to wrap it in an if guard. So we'll say if navdrawer does not equal null, then do navdoor.destroy, and that'll fix that particular error. So let's go ahead and hit play, or hit run. And uh, hopefully our, our code will work this time. Glad I caught that. Although I probably shouldn't have made that mistake in the first place. That's a pretty horrible thing. All right, so we have our profile, and if we open up our sidebar, we see our, my display name is Nelson Lekay. Now, if I come in here and edit this to Nelson Lekay dash test and hit okay, and our profile indeed updates, you notice that our my name hasn't changed anywhere else. It hasn't even changed in the profile action bar, nor has it changed up here in the sidebar. So what I want to do is I want to have that happen. We're going to start off by doing this in the sidebar, in the nav drawer, and then we'll do it in the profile view itself. So coming back into the nav drawer, we can now subscribe. So if you guys recall from the last video, that whenever we change anything that has to do with the user's profile, we send this event. So I'm going to say subscribe public void on user details updated. And I'm going to take in an account dot user. All right, so where are you? I want that. User details updated event, and I'm going to call this event. And I'll put in a to-do here to update avatar URL. Of course, we'll deal with that later. And then I'm going to say display name text dot set text event dot user dot get display name. So this should take care of the nav drawer. Let's go ahead and hit play and make sure that at least that scenario uh, is resolved. And if it is, then we know our, our, our event stuff is working and we can move on to the profile. So let's go ahead and log in here and open up the profile. And I'm going to change my name real fast. That a one, two, three. Wait a second for our profile to update. And now if I expand this, notice how my profile has changed. So we're using this sort of uh, this event architecture to make our components very much decoupled. And I really like that. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and come back into our profile activity and also handle the case when the username changes. But in this case, what we're doing, what we're going to do is we're going to change the toolbar's title. See, is if you recall on our create of our profile activity, which I'm in the profile activity class right now, we set the title of the support action bar to our display name. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say I'm going to create a new method: subscribe public void on user details changed. And then for the parameter, I'm going to say account dot user details updated event. Uh, I could just maybe to be consistent here, I can call this method on user details updated. And then I'm going to say get support action bar dot set title event user get display name. Now we can go ahead and hit play and wait for a second. I'm going to really like it. In this video, actually, we're going to make it so we can launch to specific activities so we don't have to go through this annoying login cycle all the time. So that'll be really fun. Jumping into the profile, let's go ahead. We don't need to change our password. Let's change this to 123, hit OK. And after the profile updates, notice how at the top our, our um, name has changed. Our toolbar has changed to be a uh, different text that corresponds to our display name. All right, so I think that pretty much wraps up that event. Let's start integrating the other events. I think let's start let's start off with the simplest one here. So this login activity uh, or the login fragment, if you recall, the login fragment is what has the the username and password field when you hit login uh, and you're logging in with an account on the application itself, not an external account like Facebook. And so remember, when you click the login button, this happens right here. 
our application get auth get user set logged in set display name and then we invoke callbacks.onlogged in and if you recall callbacks.onlogged in signals to the parent activity that it needs to go and move on to the next activity that the activity has been finished so we basically got to replace pretty much all of this code and we're going to replace it with bus.post new account dot login with login with username response or request and passing in the username text so that's going to be our um our username text box and our password text box of course i haven't got i haven't aliased them out into local variables or into local fields yet so i'm just going to work the, uh, work against some fields that don't exist and we'll re we'll create those fields here in a second so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say username text dot get text dot to string and then for my password and we can maybe break this up onto their own lines as well i can pass in password text dot get text dot to string now we're not quite done here with the on click method because i really want to tell while this this uh while this request is being published and it's out doing its thing. I want the user to know that something's happening behind the scenes. And I also want to disable the form so that they can't click on the username text or the password text while things are being logged in. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways to handle this. In this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, a little spinny progress bar inside appear inside of the button itself. So to do that, here's I'm going to go ahead and write the code out. And again, I'm working against fields that don't exist yet. And we'll create those fields here in a second. I'm gonna write this code above where we post to, ooh, I didn't wanna do that. That was just not what I wanted to do. I'm gonna write this code above where we post to our service layer. And what it's gonna do is it's going to show a progress bar and it's going to replace the text of the inside of this button. So I'm gonna say progress bar dot set visibility, view dot visible, visible. And then I'm gonna, uh, that button, I'm gonna say login button, and it, ooh, we do have a login button, that's cool. I'm gonna say set text to empty string. So the progress bar I'm gonna have superimposed on top of the login button. So when I set the text of the login button to blank and then show the progress bar, that's a really nice way of uh, making it look like the text inside of the button got replaced with the progress bar, which is basically the, the, the exactly the effect I'm going for here. Now let's go ahead and uh, also disable our username text and our password text. So I'm going to say username text dot set enabled false and password text dot set enabled false. All right, since I'm kind of on a roll here, uh, let's go ahead and jump down here underneath the on click method and handle the response for this request. So I'm going to say subscribe public void on the login with username account dot login with username response um let's just go ahead and say response now what i want to do here is if you recall our response inherits from uh from service response and our service response has the show error toast method and in this particular case the show error toast method will only show the error toast if our operation error is not null and is not empty so what i'm going to do here i'm going to say response dot show error toast get activity, which is because we're inside of a fragment, our context is our activity. And then I want to go ahead and say if the response did succeed, if response did succeed, so we did successfully log in, then I want to go ahead and tell the parent activity that we've successfully logged in. So I'm going to say callbacks.onLoggedIn, and then I'm going to exit the method by doing return. So now where my keyboard cursor is, is where we will be code wise code execution wise if there was a failure so let's do username text dot set error response dot uh, get property error username and then our password text dot set error response get property error password so that will show the uh, the appropriate errors on the field. We also need to go ahead and make sure that we re-enable these. So we'll say username text dot set enabled is true and password text dot set enabled is true. And 
yeah, so that's that. So now what we need to do is we need to uh, set our login button. We need to set its text back to something and then make the progress bar go away. So I'm going to say progress bar dot set visibility view dot gone. And then for our button, I'm going to say login button. I'm going to use another field that doesn't exist, exist yet. I'm going to pass in default login button text, which we'll initialize here in a second. Anyway, so that's really all the code that we need for logging in as far as the user interface is concerned. So now let's go ahead and fill out all of these fields. Before we can fill out all these fields, I need to go ahead and create the actual progress bar view that we're going to be using and we're going to be referencing. So to do that, let's jump into our resource folder, our layout folder, and jump into our fragment login, where we have our nice login fragment. And I'm going to create a progress bar that sits right on this button, inside this button. Now, the easiest way to do that is uh, we've got to create a progress bar, of course. He's going to have a layout width and a layout height of wrap content. We'll, get it, we'll give him an ID too, and the ID will be fragment login progress. Not a very inspired ID, but it'll work. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to align this progress inside of that button. And that's easy to do too. I can say align top login button. And I'm going to use the fragment login login button. And then I'm going to say align bottom login button. So now what it's going to do is you see over here, you, you probably can barely see this, even with uh, maybe even with video compression, you can't see this, but there is a progress bar, a little square progress bar on the left hand side of this button. Now it's not quite what I want because I also want it centered. I want it right over that text. So to do that, I can go ahead and say center horizontal and set that to true. By saying center horizontal to true, it centers it, well, horizontally. Finally, what I want to do is set its inner, uh, ooh, that's not even close. It's indeterminate only to true. All right, so that's all we need to do with our fragment login. Let's go ahead and create those fields. Let's jump up all the way to the top of the file, and I'm going to create a private view progress bar. I'm going to say a private edit text username text and a private edit text password text. And uh, yeah, I think that's it, except for, of course, we need our default login button text. So that's private string default login button text. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get these views established. So I'm going to say progress bar equals view find view by ID, rid dot login underscore progress. Username text. I'm, I'm so close to using a um, library to do all this for me because this is getting really old. Typing in all of this rede quite redundant code. Um, find view by ID, r.id, fragment, login, and then this is our password. And then finally, our default login button text is going to be initialized to login button dot get text dot to string. And that's it. So really, that is our login. Um, so if I come down here, I am going to make a modification to my in-memory account service, my login uh, my, right here, my login with username. And what I'm going to do here is on this response, after I instantiate it, I'm going to say if request dot username equals Nelson, then I'm going to say request dot, and then I'm going to set a property error, or or sorry, not request, response dot set property error, and then I'm going to say username invalid username or password. So we'll be able to test our error condition as well as our success condition. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if that code works. So let's start off with the username of Nelson here and I'm going to hit login. And you notice everything gets disabled. Our uh, progress bar isn't so visible unfortunately. We'll fix that here or a second. And it says invalid username or password. So that's awesome. So we get our that. And we should also probably disable the button as well. But if I type in anything but Nelson and hit OK, notice how we properly get logged in. So we noticed a couple of user interface issues. And you're always going to as you work with your application. In this case, quite, a, quite easy to fix. The login button I want to disable dirt, or inside of our... Uh, where are you? Login fragment. 
I want to disable the login button during logging in. So on our on click on the login button, I'm going to say login button set enabled false. And then our on login with username, I'm going to say login button set enabled true. So that we have that. Our progress bar seems to be slightly uh, problematic. So our progress bar isn't being displayed very well, unfortunately. So I think the problem is, is that the color of the progress bar is being masked by the button. And I also have the issue of, I never hid the progress bar to begin with. So let's go ahead and inside of our fragment login fix that. First, I'm gonna say, right here, I'm gonna say visibility gone so that the progress bar is by default not visible. But I'm also gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change its style. So there's a really cool little inverse progress bar style that I can use without having to write my own style. So I'm gonna say style equals question mark because we're accessing a theme uh, variable, android colon attr forward slash progress bar style progress bar style inverse. Oh, come on. I uh, may, be, may be missing, um, it's probably misspelling there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, did it disappear for some reason? No, I just misspelled it. Okay, so that's our login. Um, so you can go ahead and test that yourself. It should, well, I'll go ahead and test it on screen. Just in case there's another issue, like there sometimes is. With UI stuff, you, really there's so many weird edge cases that you have to think of when dealing with building UIs, and there we go. That looks awesome. All right, so our logging in works. Now let's go ahead and handle our other cases. So we need to deal with logging in externally, and I'm not actually gonna handle that yet, and the reason is, or I guess we have our test button, but um, so we could do a login from an external service, but the thing is, is we can't really test this. And I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it because we can't test it yet without actually hitting an external service. So I'm not going to worry about testing any of this code. So let's jump into reg the register activity and let's deal with that. So the register activity is going to work very similarly to our login activity. So we have our progress bar, our register button, our password, email, and username, and all that fun stuff. Okay, so when we do on click, you notice that we set the user to be logged in and we set the result to result okay and we finish. So what I need to do is change that and instead post a request. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say bus.post new account dot register request, passing in our username text dot get text dot to string our password text get text dot to string and um oops our password goes after here and our email text dot get text dot to string okay so that's going to be our our request now before i do the request i need to go ahead and set up our um uh, set up our conditions so our progress bar if you recall inside of our register activity is just a progress bar that lives on the register button, just like how our login button works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and say progress bar set visibility view visible. And then I'm gonna say for our button, our register button dot set text to empty. Then I need to do register button dot set enabled to false, our username text set enabled to false, and our password text set enabled to false. So that'll disable our entire form for us and show the progress bar. Next up, what I wanna do is handle the, um, the event response. Now, what I'm gonna do is kind of interesting here. I am gonna go ahead and uh, write a method before I write the method that's gonna handle the response event. And that is private void on user response. And it's gonna take an account dot user response response. And this code is going to be what what does what performs the actual logic. So I'm going to say, if response did succeed, set result, result okay, and then finish and return. Otherwise, 
show error toast, passing in this as the context, set the username text, set error to response dot get property error username. And of course, I'm going to do this for our password as well as our email text. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and re-enable our username text and our password text and our button. So that's really easy to do. Ooh, I did forget to disable our email text, so we'll set our enable to false. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all these lines of code and just replace them, or copy and paste them, and then replace the false with true. Now the last thing I need to do is, uh, or the last couple things I need to do is I need to make the progress bar go away. So I say progress bar set visibility view gone. And then I need to replace my register button text back with the text that we had previously. So I'll say default register um, button text as a field that hasn't been created yet. And let's go ahead and create that real fast. I'm gonna go scroll up to the top, say private string default register button text, and then I'm going to initialize the default button register text to the register button dot get text dot to string. Okay, so now we have a register activity mostly worked out. It's just a really, really simple form and not a whole lot to say about it. But why did I make this on user response and where do, where do I subscribe to my register response? Well, the reason I did that is I'm gonna subscribe, I need to subscribe to my register response, but I also need to subscribe to my external register response because our register activity handles both the case where we have an external login where the user doesn't have a local account yet, as well as a user who is creating a local account that's not externally logged in. So we need to handle both cases uh, with for posting a register request or an external register request. So I need to handle both cases and then I'm gonna funnel their both of their responses into the on user response. So I'll go ahead and say register response account dot register response response. And then I'll say on user response response. And I'm also going to subscribe to public void register or external register response account dot external register with external token response on user response response. So fortunately, our um, I managed to make that a request, not a response. Fortunately, both these responses inherit from the same base response class, and that's how we're able to do this, write this code. Anyway, we're not dealing with external logins just yet, so let's just go ahead and hit play. And what kind of error? I I, I think I did already put an error condition on this. If I go into my in-memory account service with my uh, register method. Uh, no, I didn't. So I, I don't really care too much about that. That's okay. Let's go ahead and say you're a register and hit register. And we logged in. All right, so now all that's left to do is fix that progress bar style. <laughs> so it looks like I didn't set the style correctly. Uh, let's. Uh, I'm gonna just jump into fragment login grab this attribute, hit control C, jump back into activity register and hit control V to bring in that different style. Anyway, I think that's really about it for logging in and registering. Uh, of course, we haven't dealt with our external login register yet, but we will when we get to that in the actual app when we're working with live stuff. So I guess we'll see you guys next.